Amish, to find endemic for someone in New York, or I'll name another endemic worried state that has three masks on and is living in a bubble and afraid to go to a restaurant, or somebody in another state where there's no mask, no nothing. They both have endemic. What is endemic in those two different states and from, na and from coast to coast? But what endemic means literally is with the people. So this means that this is an infectious disease that is part of everyday life, that it's sort of the trade-off you, you pay to live in civilized society where there's going to be social interaction. And with endemic diseases, what we see are ups and downs. We see a baseline number of cases, hospitalizations, and even deaths. We see flares that may occur. But we, what we don't usually see are hospitals going into crisis. So that's the remaining kind of pin that needs to, to be put into place is that we get our hospitals fortified because enough high-risk people have been vaccinated or we have enough tools like Paxlovid. But when you're dealing with an endemic disease, each person's risk tolerance is going to dictate how they navigate a world with it, just like there are people that are more or less afraid of influenza or, or take more yeah. precautions in flu season than other seasons. Do we need masks if we're fully vaccinated? Do we need plastic cubicles if we're fully vaccinated? Do we need to work from home if we're fully vaccinated? My answer to that is no, because you are then protected against what matters, serious illness, hospitalization, and death. But there are some people who want to be protected against even mild disease, which I don't think is really possible with a virus like COVID-19 because it's going to become endemic, because it's going to become unavoidable. The goal is to shift its spectrum to mild illness. So, But there are going to be many people who want to continue to wear masks, who continue to want to have high levels of protection. But I think eventually COVID-19 is going to infect them if they have social interaction. And that's the difficulty, is that people have different risk tolerances and our society is kind of not deciding which way they want to go and that's why organizations have people still working from home where, where there's a lot of restrictions in place at organizations as well as at, at universities. Universities are probably the worst example of this where they can't find an off-ramp to dealing with this the way they deal with other respiratory viruses and indeed that's the way the policy is going from the administration dealing with this like other respiratory viruses and this is something we should have done much earlier. Dr. Adalja, given the endemic nature that many people are talking Talking about how important is it that Pfizer and BioNTech come out with some sort of COVID vaccine targeting the Omicron variant? We have to continue to improve our vaccines. We're still using a vaccine targeted towards the Wuhan strain of this virus, and we know that it's become less effective as we saw Delta, as we saw Beta, and definitely as we saw Omicron. I think it becomes less and less. Uh, tenable to keep using the same version of the, of the virus. It's true that the, the vaccine is able to protect against what matters, serious disease, hospitalization, and death. But if people are worried about infections and trying to get cases down, then I think a better targeted vaccine makes sense. However, it's only going to come after the brunt of Omicron uh, passes over the United States and passes over the world, so it may be less effective. But it could be the case that this type of updating would be useful if new variants emerge out of the Omicron lineage or are related to Omicron and it gives more protection. But I think we have to start thinking about better vaccines, more universal vaccines, vaccines targeting variants, uh, if we're going to have a sustainable approach to, with using vaccines and get people confident that they can go about their lives. To that point, Dr. Adalja, how much were you encouraged or discouraged by the speed with which they were able to alter the existing vaccines to really attack the specific variant? I was impressed. This is what the value of vaccine platform technology is, that you can plug and play, that you can update the, the, va the vaccine very, very quickly. What ends up happening, though, is then the clinical trials and all of that is what slows it down because it takes a while to actually figure out how efficacious it is and what the safety profile is. There are expedited pathways for updated booster vaccines by the FDA. Hopefully those will go into place. But it's really not about the science anymore when it comes to developing a vaccine. It's all about the clinical trials and making sure that people are confident that enough time was taken, that, that they're going to be willing to get this vaccine. Uh, mRNA vaccines just shrink development time down from maybe months to sometimes even days.